Hello, everyone. So today we're going to be uh, having our guest here, who is John Lonius. And today we're going to have an interesting discussion with him around technology and whatever he's been doing. He has such an amazing journey. He's a C-suit uh, executive of three companies. He is an author and he's a hypnotherapist and a lot more. So first of all, uh, thank you so much, uh, John, for, for joining us. And thank you so much for it. Please, uh, Please just introduce the audience like you are, maybe two-liner, that would be great. Sure, Aisha, great to be here. So uh, as Aisha said, a little bit more about my background. My background spans government, education, technology, and all media sectors. Uh, I'm a metaverse evangelist, which means that I'm not a maker, but I am a, a, a philosopher a, a, around the metaverse in that I know that it's going to change the world, just like the internet over the past you know 35 years or so changed the world. So it's great to be here. So Aisha, wherever you want to take the conversation, that's where we'll go. Amazing. Now, this is the spirit, John. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for using the word metaverse, because this is exactly what I've been speaking about. But whoever I talk to, I think for some reason, my idea of metaverse kind of changes each and every time. It's a concept that is evolving with us, you know, as we human beings, um, you know, we understand culture and we, you know, kind of evolve with it. So for me, metaverse is something like that. For for you, especially when it comes to your background with a lot of different, a multitude of uh, things that you're part of. So how would you uh, say metaverse is today? Obviously, it had a journey uh, past two years. Yeah. So where is yeah. it at like? Well, so for me, when I look at the term metaverse, obviously it comes from Neil Stevenson's 1992 novel, Snow Crash. And I think most people know that, even though, you know, we can go back and, and look at very early examples of things like the metaverse. So we can we can go back to 1935, for example, and we can look at Stanley G. Weinbaum's short story Pygmalion Spectacles, which gave us the invention of magical VR goggles uh, and, and in the 1950s. So they're saying in 1935 that by the 1950s, we'll have these goggles. And then, you know, and then and then you've got Ray Bradbury's 1950 short story, The Velt, which gave us the idea of virtual reality uh, nursery where the children never left. And what's interesting is that the children eventually lock their parents in, which which kills them, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, I could I could keep going and talking about some of the history and I may do that. But when you look at the word meta, meta, you know, can mean mind. And so it's like it's really the 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 universe of the mind. And I and I think what I enjoy about this now is that as the Internet has started to connect us, you know, really powerfully a, around the world very quickly, similar to, you know, to the phone, you know, many years before that. But now we're obviously, you know, you're in Dubai. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, which you know, is considered flyover country in the United States. But I've lived in numerous countries around the world. I've I've lived and worked in major cities around the world. And so I think what's interesting about the metaverse is that it's going to really connect us to exciting and extraordinary people like yourself so that we can have a conversation. So anything that we can imagine we're going to be able to create that and create our own universes. And I think that's where we need to go when we talk about understanding different cultures and when we talk about un understanding values that, that people have. I mean, you know, obviously, before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about languages. You know, I, I've studied German, French, Russian, Japanese. I claim Japanese as a language you know, uh, that I speak fluently. And then, you know, you uh, obviously speak numerous languages as well. And so I think the I think the metaverse in many ways is going to give us the ability to connect on so many different levels, language, history. Uh, you know, we'll, you know, I, I, as a historian, I think one of the things we'll be doing in the next couple of years is being able to quite literally walk into historical events. We'll be able to see the room and 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 have that experience. And uh, one thing that if, if 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 anybody hears this, this is this is the one thing that I want to crack with the metaverse. And I know there's a couple of people working on this, but. When I was nine years old, I started studying two things, martial arts and world incense slash fragrance traditions. And so we know that incense and fragrance has been with humans from a written standpoint for 6,000 years. We know that the archaeological evidence right now is at least 35,000 years. I want to see fragrance 
in the metaverse so that we can access our memories, we can fully access our limbic system. So Aisha, I gave you a lot there to start off, but hopefully that uh, that's a good place to start. No, definitely. And you know, there's so much to unpack there. I'll just start with the universe of the mind. And obviously, mm. incense and all of those things, because you know, I, I've been reading up on you what you've been doing. So yeah, I, I'm a bit familiar of that concept. But I think uh, what you just said about the universe of the mind, and because you have your own um, kind of history with the smells, you've been studying them in depth. So so what do you think uh, is the real connection between the different levels of consciousness with, mm. with the smells? Because I really want to talk about this in depth just because uh, I think there's a link uh, that we can explore further with the metaverse and all of these uh, technology um, that we're now seeing and it's developing. So, so what do you think is the link? Like I know with the smells, it's the unconscious. It's almost like a soulful thing. You know how we connect with the music? That it's not yeah. so it's almost like you can feel the soul when when someone is singing so with the smells uh, what do you think uh, like if you can explain it for the audience they can understand you know what this concept is yeah so i, I want to connect my answer to a little bit more historical but also some popular media things so we know that in 1984, we had William Gibson's book, Neuromancer, that introduced the concept of cyberspace that he called the Matrix. We then see 15 years later that the Wachowskis, you know, would would borrow the term for their film, The Matrix, you know, and to quote Keanu Reeves, whoa, you know, and uh, and to have that. So I think what's I think what's going to be interesting is that, you know, We've all had that experience, regardless of our culture, our background, et cetera, where you walk into a building and maybe you catch a smell of something that takes you back 10 or 15 years. I remember when my father passed away and I was cleaning out his house and I found a shirt. And when I took it off the, uh, off, off the rack and smelled it, I was like, oh, my gosh, I was transported back you know, to really being with him when he was still alive. And I think that's going to be very interesting when we start talking about the metaverse. Right now, it is primarily, you know, audio and visual. We're beginning to get the haptics in place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, also, the, you know, the, 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 the visors, eyewear, goggles, whatever yeah. you want to call them, you know, they're still not where our eyes need to be. You know, they're still a little bit, you know, down in its, in its, uh, a visual perception. And so I think once we figure out, and it's coming quickly, that like the real world and the virtual world will look the same, then the next level of this is 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 going to be able to include fragrance and our ability to not only have an experience of a rose in a virtual environment, but also maybe even remember something so that we were able to access all aspects of ourselves. And, you know, with the advent of transhumanism with, you know, like, you know, we're all carrying our phones in our pocket now, you know, it's like, there's, there's been that argument that we're already cyborgs. Well, I do believe that within, uh, it may be faster than 50 years, but let's just say within 50 years, we're, you know, we're going to have, have an integration of both our physicality you know, and also then technology that we're going to integrate. And so if you remember the Borg from Star Trek, the next generation, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll be a little more attractive than the Borgs. But but the point is, is that we're going to use that to have information because, you know, uh, w- one more point on this is that the reason why it takes human beings so long to learn things is that we have to read lines you know, books, obviously, line or text or, or anything online. So the lines become paragraphs, paragraphs become chapters, chapters become books, and then you know, then we have to go get another book. So it takes us a long time to 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 linearly, you know, access information. So the ability to tap into something and access that, it's just I think it's the next evolution of of human beings. Definitely. And you know what you just said um, about the headsets and us going towards the haptics and everything. And I think all of it is quite exciting because people are now talk- talking about, you know, they want to feel the pain, they want to feel something <laughs> while they're in the metaverse. So seeing and uh, just being there and hearing is not enough for them. So I think that's where the next frontier is that we're going to somehow integrate the sound, the sounds obviously which are there, um, but but the smells and, and the touch and these other senses that we're going to explore um, with the metaverse. So, so then uh, John, what do you feel uh, the metaverse 
is it just about like metaverse as a technology is it just about the conscious or is it or is it somehow about the unconscious as well because you know i was reading uh, a bit about the visual capacity of metaverse we see in 3d and there's like a stereoscope uh, you know it, it has its own history as well like where where did that goggles idea came from and everything so so where do you feel is the link like if uh is is there a link that we can explore through uh through the smells like do you think it it will do any good to uh, to us like as a technology like where is that leading us now yeah so you said the word unconscious and the word that i use is subconscious because you know and I, it's it's different depending on 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 where you are in the world but uh the american language will if you're if you're um unconscious that means you're not aware of anything right so so the subconscious is that is that underneath conversation that's always happening different from your conscious so for example our our unconscious regulates our breathing if we're not actively controlling it the sub you know the unconscious is or the sorry excuse me the subconscious is you know monitoring our breathing our heart rate things like that it also is the is that level of those things like our hopes and our dreams and our thoughts that we oftentimes may not manifest through our through, through our conscious mind and so freud and and others have said that if we don't understand our subconscious you know we're never going to be able to manifest things in in our consciousness and so in a lot of ways the way that i look at the uh the analogy or metaphor depending on how you want to use it is that the unconscious is like the platforms that we are making whether it's roblox or you know or anything else that you don't necessarily see unless you're a maker like if you're creating that right there's the experience of what you're having and then there's the infrastructure that supports that experience and so i think that we will continue to explore the unconscious as well as the as well as consciousness consciousness within the metaverse because again these are all things that are in our minds so if we go back to meta verse mind verse a universe of the mind well i think we're going to see all that integrated amazing and obviously metaverse for now is solely i would say like it's it's based on the hyper reality or the simulation and everything that we experience in in the vr but uh, i think after uh, you know listening to one of your interviews i think you had with vans uh, i was convinced that you know smells are as much important as a visual uh, you know it has as much impact and sometimes it can be even stronger when it comes to transporting you to the other time like you shared your example um so i just want to talk want you to talk maybe about uh, the metaverse of the smells because i think that would be so interesting like how would that be you think it can take form or maybe it can become like a add on to the visuals that we already have but i'm just talking yeah. about the metaverse of the smells and and the matrix obviously because that's that's the concept of we are where it's coming from so what do you think about that is is that fiction or is that like something we would experience in uh, near reality well so i think that it's going to get developed it's a question of how so in the 1970s at least in the united states it may have been in other places but in the 19 i would say between the 50s and the 70s more more correctly there was this idea that they would they were calling it smellovision so you would watch you would watch a movie and then all of a sudden you know they would say here's green grass and you would rub a little card in the movie theater and you would sniff it and you would get you know the experience of grass for example uh, on a movie now that didn't take off because it kind of become cumbersome where you have to take yourself out of the experience of watching the movie to to smell something but i think that as we start to really understand more of the haptics and more of the ways that we're going to um uh affect the inputs that we experience within the metaverse whether we're in a completely virtual world or whether we're in a uh in a uh hybrid environment you know um i think it'll get very interesting so let me let me kind of weave out a little bit from that in that when you look at human beings it's that if we see someone that we want to connect with mate with whatever you want to say there you know we will look at them first visually and we're like oh that person is attractive i i want to know more about them right well believe it or not the next thing that we do as humans is that we want to know what 
what their smell is. And our uh, the expression is our nose knows. And so the ability to be able to understand someone's chemical makeup that is telling us from a from a subconscious standpoint, this is a good mate. This is someone who will make you know uh, you know great babies. <laughs> um, you know, it's it, it, it's it's one of those things where now in the last hundred and sixty years or so, we've gotten away from natural fragrances. We are covering ourselves in synthetics. Uh, you know, whether it's cologne or perfume, there are obviously exceptions to people that are using natural fragrances. So you're in Dubai. So one of the most um, um, popular incenses in Dubai is aloes wood. It's sometimes called agarwood, eagerwood, uh, um, eaglewood, excuse me. Um, uh, the Japanese can call it uh, Kiara. Um, they'll call it a, a couple of words as well. But what's interesting about that fragrance is that when you are in the presence of aloes wood, and this this is biblical, I mean, it, it goes back to Old Testament. I mean, it's been used for thousands and thousands of years, is that when you smell aloes wood, it calms the mind. It produces the mental clarity of a 30-minute meditation in a single inhalation. Yeah, I felt that. You know, when I uh, first smelled it, it, it smelled different. It was like, you know, it was euphoric. It could take you to another place. And it was still very organic, you know. So I think that's the yeah. definition of incense, right? It's a positive smell. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, so, so the word incense comes from the Latin incensum, meaning to burn through. So anything that can be burned that is fragrant. So it could be bark, uh, seeds, leaves, etc. Anything that's burned that's fragrant um, can be considered incense. But in the sense of aloes wood, you know, um, the Latin name is Aguilaria Aguilocha, but it becomes very popular in the Middle East because it's it's been used for thousands of years. Um, but when you're in the presence of it, it, it relaxes you. So one of the things I think it's going to be really interesting with the, with the metaverse is that right now we're excited about these experiences where we're able to go to different places. Well, how are we going to be able to use that for mindfulness? How, how are we going to use that to really center ourselves and, and really, you know, have a deeper understanding of who we are and, and what it means to be us in the world around us? Exactly. And, you know, I've been uh, reading up a lot on, you know, a lot of startups are working on mindfulness or they're using the word mindfulness when it comes to metaverse. And that's great because, uh, you know, we've all heard about mental health awareness, especially post COVID. Uh, but I think one thing, again, it's still missing out is the smells. I think it has such an important part. Yes, we've been doing that through music, music therapy. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're doing it with, through visuals, some calming music and, you know, stuff like that. But I think smells have been greatly uh, ignored and that's that's a that's an area that uh, some startups need to tap into but also john um, because I, I you have been working with the uh, the holograph technology uh, with one of your companies so maybe you can talk about that because it's it's different than metaverse but at the same time it's a technology it's a frontier technology that we're experiencing and at some point it will be integrated with the metaverse the idea of metaverse with the idea of Web3 and how people communicate, how people uh, kind of get a, get a different sense of identity because obviously yeah. it's about human beings. So yeah. do you think there is a link with uh, incense there or maybe your research up till today? Do you think you will at some point maybe write about that, uh, that connection? Yeah, well, I, th I think so. so. So again, you so you put a lot of stuff there. So let me kind of walk through it a little bit. So so yes, it is true. So, so I'm the president of Vidzu Media. And I'm also the chief operating officer of a company called GenieCast. And GenieCast has a technology called APIR, A-P-I-R. It's augmented placement in real time. And so, for example, uh, people like Ray Kurzweil, um, who, you know, came up with the idea of the singularity where the robots will become smarter than we are. You know, we, we, we will work with him. We've also worked with Steve Wozniak, Simon Sinek, names that you, that you know. But one of the things that is, is very interesting is that if you're a public speaker and you want to, and you want to touch, move and inspire uh, audiences around the world, you 
you're only limited to the amount of time that you can travel to each one of those places to speak. Obviously, you know, now with, you know, video technology, things like Zoom and, you know, and others, we're able to, you know, have that experience. And 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 it is two way. Clearly, you and I are having a communication. Well, if we remember Star Trek, the next generation and the holodeck, right? I totally believe that, you know, where where in the 19th century we had the home office. I believe that in the 21st century, we're going to have the home holodeck where we will be able to walk into our space, put our goggles on or whatever we're going to be doing and, you know, be, be able to step into a meeting. Well, the appear technology is is the next level of that, which is the ability to show up on stage or in a box that we transport yeah. and you're and you are three dimensional. You are. I mean, right now we're you know, we're on a Zoom call and we are two dimensional. But to be able to, to be three dimensional and then have that experience, I think, is going to elevate that. And what's interesting, again, giving history, because I am a historian. So kind of going back a little bit. So in 1957, we had Isaac Asimov's novel, The Naked Sun. And in that book, it imagines a world where there's a global pandemic and uh, it kills most of the humans on this planet called Solaria. And now these humans connect through 2D television screens mm -hmm. and also 3D holograms. So if we look at the world pandemic that just happened yeah. where everybody everybody had to get on for the most part on the video calls yes. you know we see we we see Isaac Asimov's 1957 book playing itself out almost in reality right exactly. yeah. and, and so at the end of the day regardless of how much people know about whatever they know about what we all want to do is we all want to connect and we all want to, you know, really be loved and appreciated for who we are. Nothing mm -hmm. more, nothing less. And so, you know, though our governments will tell us oftentimes who our enemies are, you know, um, what I'm interested in is, you know, who are my friends and 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 how I know my friends is that we're connected to the same things and 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 we're committed to creating new things. And I think like, like this is what the metaverse is. And and if, if somebody says, oh, it's not going to happen. No, it it it's happening now. It's happening now. And and I I I, I look at the naysayers, in, you know, in the 80s and in the 90s about the Internet. Oh, you know, the Internet's never going to become anything. It's like no, it, it is. And, 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 and this is where we are. And oftentimes I will kind of lean into things where people are saying, Oh, it's never going to happen because that resistance causes a persistence that persistence then leads to the next evolution of whatever it is we're working on. And the last point I'll make before I throw it back over to you is this, we now know from a, from a, from an archaeological standpoint, uh, from a human development standpoint, is that human beings have basically been the same anatomically for the past 300,000 years. So Homo sapiens sapiens. If we have been the same, essentially, for the last 300,000 years, and you know we're, we're perceiving the world the same way, et cetera, the only thing that has changed in those 300,000 years is the technology that we interact with. We went from fire to lights. We went from tele, you know, writing letters, you know, to the internet. I mean, obviously there's a lot more stops in between there, but you get my point. So it's a very exciting. And the idea that you and I could have a conversation halfway around the world today is pretty awesome. Exactly. No, no. Uh, so many points there, John. One question that I have, uh, you can say out of curiosity, just because I'm a visual artist and I, you know, like going in with uh, complex ideas. You know, we have seen uh, the idea of identity evolve over time, especially with the usage of uh, social media, especially with the usage of now avatars, digital twins. We've seen a lot of different forms that, uh, you know, pop, popped up uh, during this time. Um, so I think my question is more towards the human identity and how it has been shaped through the visual double identity. And in the same way, I want to come back to the question of the smells. Like when we choose a smell for ourselves, like fragrances, we just go and we, we just shop. It's, it's, it's a question that I always had that, how do we choose those smells? Obviously that's not a smell that I as a human encompass, right? It's, it's a fake smell. I'm, I'm just being superficial. I'm just choosing something that uh, seems good to me. So how much do you feel like is it's, it's out of our personal choice or maybe it's because 
you know, it has my historical background, like maybe I'm an Asian, it has to do with that, you know? So I just want to know whether the smells uh, create our identity and mm. if whether when we're choosing it, or, like personally, not with the mate or anything, because I get that concept, but like, yeah. Like what's what's that idea? I really want to know uh, from a personal identity point of view. Yeah. So again, a lot there, but let's let's see how we can break this down. So <laughs> there. Uh, so the first novel written in the world was written by Lady Murasaka Shikibu in Japan during during the Heian period, around seven ninety four uh, to eleven eighty five A.D. And in that book, she writes about a character named Karo, and Karo is this courtier who that when he would walk into a town they would smell him from a hundred paces away in a good way they would say that his fragrance was transformative it was amazing and um how how this relates i think uh to 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 my own development and also to how we you know are, are attracted to, to certain smells is that you know it, it really does relate to our consciousness so if, for example, you know, when you were growing up, if your mother or your father wore the same kind of a fragrance all the time, that would get into, you know, your your memory DNA right. um, and 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 you would be impacted by that, in, you know, in in many ways. Oftentimes, you know, if if we're not compatible from a scent standpoint, you know, you may be very attractive, but then w- once I get a sense, a, a, a sense of your essence, you may not become attractive anymore to me, right? And so, what's interesting is that we did not know, from a scientific standpoint, until 2014, how human beings actually smell, like in the sense of how how the system works. Um, I write I, I I write about that in in one of my articles and feel free to to stalk my articles on on LinkedIn to to, to get that. But um, I really do think that if we're going to develop out the metaverse, the universe of the mind, everything is going to have to be in play, just just like it is in the real world. And there are things in the real world that we don't want to associate with, and there's other things in the real world we do want to associate with, but you know, it's going to have to be everything. And then we're going to have to figure out, you know, what that means when we talk about being, being interoperable, when we talk about, you know, how, how are we going to real time render these, these, these 3d worlds? How are we going to experience everything, you know, synchronously? How, how are we going to, you know, give people like, if, if my wife, you know, is around the world and I want I, and I am talking to her on a zoom call, how, how am I going to be able to pump her fragrance into the room so that I can, you know, have more of a connective experience with her. So um, unfortunately I wish I had exact answers, but I think this is the fun part of really any developing industry or developing concept because, you know, we're able to have these dialogues, but again, Anything we can imagine, we're going to be able to do in the metaverse. And and, and and what I enjoy about that, and I'm not, you know, like, you know, it it becomes dangerous to maybe say some of these things sometimes. But it's like, if we look at the United States, you know, the, the majority population is still Caucasian, right? And so the United States has been developed in a way, pursuant primarily you know, to a Caucasian way of thinking. What I think is interesting about the metaverse, which I'm all for, is that, you know, if it truly is a world creation, that means that everyone in the world is going to have to learn about each other, discover what 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 makes us unique and special and interesting. And that will change the world because we won't be able to necessarily you know, shun the other as, as we say, or, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I don't understand that person there. Therefore that person's evil. No, it doesn't mean that at all. It means that you are so ignorant. You haven't taken the time to learn about somebody else. And that's why I feel very fortunate that at the age of nine, when I started studying incense, I had to study all the cultures. I had to understand different religions. I had to understand different ways of thinking that has given me a unique edge from other people because, you know, I mean, you know, when when we were talking, you know, you were talking about how you speak Urdu, you know, and 
and Hindi. And, and then I told you in the 90s, you know, I used to import Agarabhati from Madras and Mangalore and, and Dupe. And, and it's like at first glance, you're like, wait, what does all that mean? But but you knew what that meant. And so I think that the way that we start to understand each other is going to expand exponentially and it's going to be very rich for us because the last point I'll make is that in nature, nature is strong when it is diverse. If we start removing things from nature, it no longer becomes strong. And that's a problem. Amazing. No, uh, there's so much more that I could just go on on about uh, all of the different things that, uh, you know, you've been speaking about. And I'm learning a lot because, you know, my uh, knowledge about metaverse is solely about the visuals, because that's what I work in. You know, that's my medium. But, you know, it's always refreshing to learn about a new medium, a new sense. And obviously, this is the knowledge that you can incorporate as an artist. So, you know, that that's what intrigues me about these conversations, this cross-disciplinary exchange. Uh, so, first of all, thank you so much, John, uh, for for all that you were saying, maybe just a one liner that you can say where the technology of metaverse is leading and what will you be working on next? A one liner. Look, I, I would say this, do not limit your imagination because when you limit your imagination, you cut yourself off from what's possible. Amazing. Thank you so much, John. And yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Aisha, thank you so much. Thank you.